Hello and welcome to the Erdad Stamps YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to stamps and stamp collecting. My name is Pete West and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it and if you do please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to get regular updates on new content. Hello again from Our Dad Stamps. At the time of recording this video podcast, we're in the middle of the Football World Cup, so it seemed appropriate that I should do a video about World Cup stamps. I first became aware of World Cup stamps in 1966 when England hosted the World Cup for the first time. I was 10 years old at the time, but an avid collector at that time, as was my father. And lucky for us, my mum worked in the local post office. So every time that there was a new set of stamps released, she would come home with a set for me, a set for my dad, a first day cover for me, a first day cover for my dad. And so we had a, a, a certainly a, a very growing collection of Great Britain stamps. And as it was with the World Cup stamps, she brought home the set and I dutifully stuck them into my album using hinges, which immediately reduced the value of those stamps. But that's what we did in those days. And uh, admired them. And like everybody in England at that time, was caught up in World Cup fever, as they said. And uh, yeah, I kept looking at them and thinking what a great set of stamps they were. It was actually an unusual set because of the three stamps, each was designed by a different person. The fourpenny stamp was designed by William Kempster and showed two footballers kicking a ball. The sixpenny stamp was designed by David Gentleman, a well-known stamp designer at that time, which showed a goalkeeper catching the ball. And the one and threepenny was designed by David Kaplan, another well-known designer, uh, again showed a goalkeeper trying to catch the ball. Each one of them is in quite a different style. So as I said, it's, it's an unusual set to have different designers designing all three stamps. And because each of these was a multicolored stamp, there was of course room for errors. Although the fourpenny stamp seems to have got by unscathed, the sixpenny stamp can be found with the black omitted, which represents itself in the goalkeeper having a, a white top instead of a black top. The green omitted, which means the grass is not there and one of the shorts of the one of the players is in white rather than green. And also with the red omitted, which is, shows two players that should have red shirts but have white shirts. So these are something that you can look out for. And if you're lucky enough, they're, they're not cheap by any means, but uh, maybe something you would like to collect. And also the one and Thrupney has a variety with the blue omitted which shows as the um, the striker with the blue and white striped shirt actually has just a, a plain white shirt. As we all know, England won the World Cup that year and it was decided that the Fortley stamp would be overprinted with the words England winners on them. And this led to more excitement from us stamp collectors in that it was another one to collect. But also it was announced that the stamps would only be on sale in England because obviously Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland hadn't won the World Cup. And so this led people to believe that maybe it would be quite a rare stamp and would be worth money. So everybody went out to try and buy one and there was actually queues of people at the post office the morning it was released trying to, to buy the stamp. And there were actually nearly 12 and a half million stamps sold and they sold out within days of being used. So from being thought of as possibly a rare stamp, they're actually very common and, and I've managed to pick up half sheets of mint stamps quite easily uh, and full sheets of mint stamps quite easy to come by. So unfortunately it's not a rarity but it's a, it's a nice stamp to have because it commemorates an important occasion in English football. Interestingly, out of the 16 teams that were represented at the World Cup in 1966, only five of them produced stamps associated with the World Cup, apart from England, that is. 
And they were mostly the Eastern Bloc countries. Bulgaria, Hungary and the Soviet Union all produced stamps to mark them of the World Cup. But also North Korea and Uruguay produced a single stamp as well. Uruguay were the original hosts and original winners of the World Cup, so maybe they had more of a connection. But none of the other countries thought it was worthwhile producing stamps to, uh, to mark the World Cup. So it's an interesting feature. And also for the 66 World Cup, there was an omnibus series issued by some of the countries of the British Commonwealth. And you can collect 20 different sets of identical stamps with just different countries commemorating the 1966 World Cup. I always like omnibus editions because when you get the whole set, it just gives you a sense of achievement that you have a complete lot. As I said, the first World Cup was hosted by Uruguay and won by Uruguay in 1930. But at that time, they didn't produce any stamps to commemorate it. The World Cup has been held every four years since that date, apart from during the Second World War when it was suspended. And ever since 1930, the original one, uh, the host country has always produced at least one stamp to commemorate the World Cup. In 1934, the second World Cup was hosted by Italy and, and they actually produced two sets of stamps and both of them are really nice sets and quite valuable now as well. The first was a set of, of normal stamps which depicted footballers in action in various poses and the second set was a set of airmail stamps and these featured uh, a view of the one of the stadiums being used for the World Cup matches with a flying boat flying over them or flying near them. Whether they used flying boats for all their airmail services at that time, I don't know why they particularly chose flying boats, but all of them depict flying boats. And as I said, both those sets are, are very valuable. So if you get the chance to buy any, they're certainly worth looking at. And they are a really nice looking set of stamps. After Italy in 1938, France hosted the World Cup. And they were a bit boring, really. They only produced a single stamp in one colour, which shows some action from a, from a game. And following on from that, there was a break for 12 years during the Second World War when there weren't any World Cup matches at all. Uh, but the tradition continued in 1950 when Brazil hosted the World Cup for the first time. And they once again produced a set of three stamps to mark the World Cup event. Going on from 1950, the World Cup has been held every four years and every host nation since that time has produced at least one stamp to commemorate the World Cup. The only slight anomaly was in 1954, Switzerland produced a set of stamps commemorating different sports and one of them was representing the World Cup that they were hosting, but most of the others have produced different sets of stamps. It might be an area to collect on a thematic basis most of them aren't particularly valuable. As I said, the, the first ones done by Italy are, but most of the others can be picked up fairly, fairly reasonably. However, the, the nearer you get to modern times, the more abundant the stamps become, and so it gets a bit more onerous to collect them all. By 1990, when Italy hosted the World Cup, they produced six mini sheets with a total of 36 stamps to commemorate the World Cup. And from then on, most countries have produced a wide range of stamps available, often in mini sheets, often more than one set leading up to the World Cup to help promote it. And in addition, countries outside of those participating in the World Cup have also started producing World Cup stamps. So it's getting more and more like everything in the stamp world each country was producing more and more stamps and it's becoming more and more difficult to, to collect the complete set, which I always think is the goal of stamp collecting. Whatever your chosen topic is, we all want to collect the complete set. And if the complete set consists of 5,000 stamps, then that makes life really difficult. So whilst I understand why post offices now are, are producing more and more stuff, it does make life difficult for us stamp collectors. And I have gone on about this with uh, British stamps, but just to be outdone, I looked at the Qatar post for the current World Cup and I found eight different issues. Some of these were mini sheets, 
Some of these were sets of stamps. An odd one or two was just a single stamp. But as I said, there were eight different issues and there may have been more, I may not have covered it all. But further from that, the Qatari Post Office has 160 licensed products commemorating their hosting of the World Cup. That seems a ridiculous amount of things to collect. And I'm assuming you wouldn't want to collect every single one of those. Not all of them are stamp related either, which makes it a bit strange. But certainly if you want to collect all the stamps from Qatar commemorating the current World Cup, you're going to have to spend quite a considerable amount of money to achieve that. Having a quick look around the, the world of stamps and all the catalogues, there are thousands upon thousands of stamps you could collect related to the World Cup. We all know the countries that produce loads and loads of stamps to commemorate anything and, and they all have in recent times produced something connected with the World Cup. If you try to collect just World Cup stamps, I think you could go on forever and ever. But if perhaps you limited it to just the host nation's World Cup stamps, or maybe the winning nation's World Cup stamps, then that's probably something achievable and certainly well worth a look at. I've got here just a selection of the, the stamps that were produced by the home nations, particularly from the early years. And some of them are not particularly interesting, I have to say, but there are some really nice stamps there. So take a look, see what you think, and maybe World Cup stamps will be a theme that you could start collecting. Thank you for listening. I hope your team does well in the World Cup. And if this has inspired you to start collecting World Cup stamps, then happy hunting. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. 
Don't forget you can visit my online stores at eBay and Del Camp under the name of Our Dad Stamps, where I have over 2,000 items for sale. Please join us again in two weeks' time for another edition of Our Dad Stamps podcast. <laughs>